Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you again, even though I can't see you physically. I think you can see me on the screen. You know, I really miss being with y'all, and uh, this is this is what we have to do right now. I wanted to come up with something kind of familiar. Remember, we always had our good morning sign when we begin, and uh, I'm going to continue talking about Honduras a little bit. I hope you remember from last week, we traveled from the mission house and we had just gotten into Coralito, which was the city that we were serving in. And I told you that the uh, church there had a welcome for us. Well, when we went into the welcome, uh, our group leader in the plaid shirt there is Mickey Cox. And uh, the, one, the fellow in the black shirt is named Carlos. And, and Carlos went with us. He lives in Nashville. And his uh, son-in-law is, is Greg Childress, who came over here the time that we had our Lord's Supper together. And uh, the, the young gentleman with him is the pastor of that church. And he, he does a great job in that church. I think I told you previously that there were many people there who were already Christians, and that has a lot to do with a strong church in the area. So here they welcomed us. And then the next thing we do when we get there on Sunday afternoon is we have to get unpacked. And you see, we're, we're loading out the mattresses. We have cots that we sleep on while we're there, and we have little air mattresses put on top of them. Those are actually the mattresses uh, very much like the ones we sleep on at the mission house. So we take our sheets and everything and our pillows, and we get set up there uh, on the mattresses. And after we set up where we're staying and get everything set up, of course, we have to set the tent up where we will be having our services. If you noticed uh, that we had our greeting in, inside their church, but we used their church for our medical facility, and it was just much easier to preach out there in the open air because the medical facility needed uh, inside space, and we really don't need inside space for the preaching service. So we got that set up, and when it was set up, uh, you see here, it's, there's a building right next to it. That's where we actually slept during the week, and I'll show you more about that in the weeks to come. But it happened to be right next to where we had our services. And uh, we learned that first night, uh, which you'll see more about in a minute, that we needed to have a guard uh, to watch our stuff when we were away uh, from our house because people are the same everywhere. If you leave something laying around, someone's going to come in and pick it up. So we had, we had our meal kind of late that night. As you see, I've got my, my laser vision eyes there so I can see in the dark. No, I'm just kidding. It's a kind of a neat picture of me looking down at my phone that night. You know, I mentioned that we do not have any cell service there. So uh, anyway, we would have our service. And uh, that first night, of course, we're in there together. There are pews and there are chairs. And then the first night, you've already seen these guys. That's uh, Carlos translating for Mickey, who was the preacher for that night. They are both 80 years old, so it was our oldest group to be preaching uh, that night. Uh, of course, I'm sharing with you my devotions each day, and uh, this was our third day devotion. So after this week, I'm going to have to come up with some other Bible story to share with you each week. But the, the last animal that I told him about was a jaguar. Of course, a jaguar is a very large animal, and uh, in fact, it's native to the Western Hemisphere, and it's the largest big cat in the Western Hemisphere. And uh, it's kind of losing some of its uh, area that it lives in because people are moving in there. So its, it's uh, habitat is getting smaller and smaller. Most of the jaguars now live in the rainforest of South America around Brazil, but there are still some in Central America as well. Now, uh, they look similar to uh, leopard, but they have, they're a little heavier and their spots are a little bit different and that's how you can tell them apart. But one of the things that's unusual about them is they, are, they like to swim. They will get in the water and they'll swim and swim just like a tiger does. You know, tigers and jaguars are the only big cats that like the water and will get in and swim. And the last thing I want to tell you about them is they, they are very, they have a very powerful bite. And uh, that's how they kill their prey. They usually sneak up on them and they'll attack and they'll make a powerful bite right on the head. Their jaws are stronger than any other uh, of the, the cats because that's, that's how they do that. And we kind of moved into our devotion from that because we talked about the fact that uh, when 
Jesus was tempted in, in Mark, the verses that we have uh, in verse 12 and 13, it says, The Spirit drove him, meaning Jesus, into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild animals. Now, Mark is the only one that talks about the fact that he was with wild animals. We wouldn't really think about that, but uh, this wasn't a, a random detail. What it does, basically, it kind of points us back to Adam. You know, Adam and Eve lived in perfect Garden of Eden, and there were, the animals were not wild. Remember, all the animals came by, and Adam named them, so it was one of those things where everybody was tame, and then, of course, Eve and Adam uh, ate from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and sin entered into the world. And after that, you know, it said there in Genesis that they had to work harder to uh, get their crops, and that uh, a lot of things changed because sin entered the world. And in comparison, uh, we have Adam living in a perfect garden and uh, having everything provided for him, and yet he sinned. And because he sinned, we see that Jesus came in to an imperfect world, and he's being tempted just like Adam was being tempted, yet he's not in a perfect garden. He's in a wilderness among those wild animals, and yet he didn't yield to sin. And uh, because of that, he went, went to the cross, and of course we're celebrating this week with Easter, and he died for our sins, and he was resurrected and had victory over uh, the devil and our sins, and now we're able to have eternal life because of that. And uh, so what a great contrast. Here Jesus comes into an imperfect world, and he dies for our sins, the things that we've done wrong, so he can provide for us a perfect eternity. Uh, I do want to, uh, this is a little longer than normal, but I do want to pray for everybody this week. Uh, I'm not going to mention my prayer request because we've taken up a little extra time, but I do want to pray as we close together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today, the opportunity to spend time with friends, and Lord, I pray that we'll be able to be together soon. I pray that you be with each of them as they're watching this, Father. Uh, give them strength, and I just pray that you be with the doctors and nurses and others that are working so hard during this time, Father. Give them strength as well, and we pray that you bring a quick end to this uh, COVID-19 virus, Father, because we know that you're the only one that can do that. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining me today.